the topic of this video is anastomosis around scapula so before we study the anastomosis around scapula let us see what exactly is anastomosis now arterial anastomosis what exactly it is it is actually connection between the branches of two neighboring or adjacent arteries so that is what we can see in this picture this is one artery which is supplying this particular area of the body and this is another artery neighboring artery which is supplying this area now if there had been no connection between these two arteries then what would happen if there is any block in this artery this part of the body will not receive any blood and will undergo necrosis that is the cell death will occur in case there is an anastomosis that is connection between the branches of this artery and the branches of this neighboring artery then what will happen there will be a collateral circulation this channel right where we have the anastomosis this channel is now known as collateral channel the blood from this artery will flow through this collateral channel and will supply this part of the body also so this will survive so this is the importance of anastomosis now coming to anastomosis around scapula uh, where exactly this anastomosis takes place it takes place at two places first is around the body and in all the fossae we have three fossae in uh, the body of the scapula two we can see on the dorsal side supraspinous and infraspinous and on the ventral aspect we have the subscapular fossa so in all the three fossae the anastomosis will occur and the second site of anastomosis is the acromion process now let us see first the anastomosis around the body of the scapula right it takes place between the branches of which two arteries when we look at uh, the artery arteries here we can see this is the arch of aorta on the right side this is the brachiocephalic trunk this will be the right subclavian artery now this right subclavian artery we can see here is divided into three parts by this muscle which is known as scalenus anterior muscle this is the first part proximal to scalenus anterior second part will be deep to scalenus anterior and the third part will be distal to the scalenus anterior similarly we can see here now as this subclavian artery crosses the outer border of first rib we start calling the same artery as axillary artery which is also divided into three parts and the three parts are the first part and which muscle actually divides it into three parts the muscle is pectoralis minor so the first part of axillary artery is proximal to the pectoralis minor muscle second part is deep to the pectoralis minor muscle and third part will be distal to the pectoralis minor muscle now the anastomosis around scapula which will be located here posteriorly that will take place between the branches of first part of subclavian artery so first part of subclavian artery from here we will have two branches we will see them in detail and we can also see here they are going posteriorly towards the scapular region and between the branch of third part of axillary artery here also we can see one artery going posteriorly towards the scapular region so the anastomosis around the body of scapula that takes place between the branches of first part of subclavian artery and third part of axillary artery in this diagrammatic view it becomes very clear so this is first part of subclavian artery with its branch and this is the third part of axillary artery with its branches now let us look at the branches of subclavian artery which will participate in the anastomosis these branches are so here we have first part of subclavian artery uh, there is a small trunk which arises from there and we call it thyro cervical trunk right so it will have three branches one is inferior thyroid we will not we are not bothered about that uh, at present and we have two more branches which will be going to the scapular region and these are this is the suprascapular we can see here the suprascapular going here towards the uh, supraspinous fossa first and then it will pass through the spinoglenoid notch 
that is between the spine of scapula and the glenoid cavity right so there is a gap here through this it passes and reaches here the infraspinous fossa so this is the first branch from the thyro cervical trunk which itself is a branch of first part of subclavian artery so suprascapular artery the second artery which participates in the anastomosis around the body of scapula that is this is the transverse cervical and which branch of transverse cervical the deep branch of transverse cervical this will also reach the scapular region and this is going to run along <coughs> sorry this is going to run along the medial border of the scapula and we can see here this is also uh, sending the branches we can see here there is an anastomosis between actually the branches of uh, the suprascapula and the transverse cervical and here in the infraspinous fossa we can see the anastomosis between the branches of deep transverse cervical and a branch coming from the third part of axillary artery let us look at now the branches from the third part of actually axillary artery which will participate in the anastomosis around body of scapula so these are in fact this is right there is only one artery so this is the third part of axillary artery the three branches are we can see here anterior circumflex humeral posterior circumflex humeral and this is the subscapular artery so this subscapular artery which runs along the inferior border of the subscapular muscle this will give a branch known as circumflex scapula and the circumflex scapula this will wind around the lateral border of the scapula to reach the infraspinous fossa and we can see here it is uh, its branches are anastomosing with the suprascapular artery branches as well as with the branches from deep branch of transverse cervical artery so this is clear so the branches which will participate in anastomosis they are two from the thyro cervical trunk which is from first part of subclavian artery and these are suprascapular and deep branch of transverse cervical there is one artery from the third part of axillary artery and that is the circum uh, flex scapular branch of subscapular artery so these are the three arteries which participate here in the three fossae so what is the clinical significance of the anastomosis around the scapula now suppose there is any block in the distal part of subclavian artery that is beyond the first part of subclavian artery and proximal to the third part of axillary artery maybe in the first part of axillary artery or the second part of axillary artery then in such a case what will happen the anastomosis around the body of the scapula that will provide collateral circulation so we can see here through these anastomotic channels or collateral channels the blood will reach the subscapular artery and then back here to the third part of axillary artery distal to the block and this blood can flow through the brachial artery and uh, supply the upper limb so that is the importance of this anastomosis now we'll look at another site that is the anastomosis around the or over the acromion process arteries involved in anastomosis over the acromion process they are branch from first part of subclavian artery and then branches from second part and third part of axillary arteries so they will participate in the anastomosis over the acromion process so let us look at the branches that are involved in uh, anastomosis over acromion process right all the branches their name you can see acromial branch acromial branch and acromial branch right so it is obvious because the anastomosis is over the acromion process so first uh, which branch from the subclavian artery that is the suprascapular so acromial branch of suprascapular artery right which is a branch of thyro cervical trunk which is a branch of the first part of subclavian artery second branch this is will be from the second part of axillary artery which branch thoracoacromial artery and we can see here this is the thoracoacromial artery and its acromion branch this will participate from the third part of axillary artery it will be the posterior circumflex humeral artery its acromion branch so we can see here the acromial branch of the posterior circumflex humeral 
branch from the third part of axillary artery. So these are the three arteries participating in the anastomosis here. First is acromial branch of suprascapular artery, acromial branch of thoracoacromial artery and the acromial branch of posterior circumflex humeral artery. So this is in total, right? This diagram you are supposed to draw where you can see anastomosis around the uh, body of the scapula as well as anastomosis over the acromion process. So we can see here all these branches which we have already discussed. This should be the complete diagram to show the anastomosis around scapula. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe my channel so that I can put more such videos. And if you want uh, the questions and answers in anatomy, all types of that, then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com. Thanks once again.